In this video, I wanna show you how do you set up corporate credit cards. So if you have a business credit card, yet your employees or your business partner has access to that credit card, so multiple people are using it, how do you set that up inside QuickBooks? So we always wanna start with setting up in our chart of accounts and then syncing it. Now, one thing I wanna say is it's gonna depend how it comes through your bank feed. So if you are using your bank feed, right, you come over here and you set it up, does your whole credit card come in through one way or do you have each individual a way for each individual card to be downloaded and added to QuickBooks because you can only sync one external bank or credit card with only one account within QuickBooks. That's how it makes sure that it always syncs it over properly if it was set up right. So if you go under accounting chart of accounts, you're going to be thinking about that as we set this up. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to set up a new credit card right here. You're going to click new, choose credit card, detail type is credit card, and then you're going to type in here. So if it's a corporate credit card, for example, I'll just type in corporate credit card. You would type in the name of your bank that you're using for your credit card. All right. So that's American Express, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, City, Capital, whatever it is, you're going to put the title in there. Okay. You're not going to worry about the amount. You're not going to worry about sub accounts at this point. So we're going to click this and then we'll just do save and new. And that gives us another card. Then you could type in the employee's name. So this is going to be for those of you who say, I have different employees. I want to know each individual card or it syncs from the bank through each individual card. And then we'll do, let's do one, two, three, four. Okay. So this is the employee's name and the last four of their card. And then if you want it to show up as a sub account, which I'll show you what that means in a moment, you're going to choose corporate credit card here and you're going to click save and close. We'll just do one. I'll show you what it looks like. So the way this is going to show up is you're going to have your main credit card here. You have your sub account here. So as you add to it, all the different employees together will total what's owed on the one card. That's how that works. So you will have to break down their payments, which I'll show you in a little bit for each card, but that this is how this is designed. Okay. So let's add one more employee and then we'll add some transactions too. So let's go in. We're going to add another credit card. We're going to add James credit card. You can, you don't have to add their, um, you don't have to add credit card. You can just put their name and the account number, but that's up to you. Then you're going to do sub account. And what are we going to pick here? We're going to make it a sub of the corporate card and click save and close. So what we have now is our corporate card. Everything's zero. There's the Candace one. There is the James. These are two different employees. Okay. Everyone who has a card, if you're downloading them just to each individual card, you'll need to set them up this way. Then you're going to click view. You could technically make them each their own account as well. That's up to you. I'm going to show you some different strategies within that. So you're in here and you can enter in your credit card charges just like normal. Up here, you can download them. You can pay a bill. You have choice over how you enter these. I'm just directly inside the check register or the credit card register entering the transaction. So right here, it says add credit card charge. And I'm going to just manually add a few for the example. So we're going to go through and we're going to add Bob's burger joint. We're going to spend some money there, meals, save and close. Then we're going to add another one and we're going to go to the, let's see, insurance. Not going to worry about the bill right now. And I'm going to pay $1,000 on that. Great. Then I'm going to have insurance, expense, save and close. Okay, so we've added a few transactions. We now owe $1,018.97. If we go back to the chart of accounts, you'll notice that the sub account owes $1,019. 1897, but so does the main account. So what happens is as we add to each employee, it totals it together. And so some of you want that, that you want to see what do we owe overall for the whole credit card, but then per each of the cards themselves as well. So then we're going to click view register and we're going to add a couple charges in here for James. So let's say that he went and got some fuel. It's been $55. We'll add that in. Okay, let that's the only transaction we'll add for that one for now, just so we can see it. All right, so now we have the Candace for $1,018.97 and James for $55. You'll notice when we add these two together, we get $1,073.97, and that's what 
the card shows as the corporate card. If we click on view register, the corporate card will show all transactions that have ever happened. If we drop this down and we pick the sub cards, they're only going to show what you entered in their accounts. That's how sub accounts work. Okay. Now, if you ever said, I actually don't want, I actually don't want them to be sub accounts. What you can do is come in here and drop this little down, click on the little edit and just take it off of sub account and click save and close. And it will now have be its own individual credit card. So that's your choice on how you want it designed in your QuickBooks, depending on your business. Everybody's is a little different. Every bank and how it downloads is a little different. I'm going to put it back to sub account for this example. Okay. So the next question becomes, all right, Candace, how do I enter in my payments for these credit cards? So let's say it's ideal if you pay it off every month, but maybe you don't, maybe you only make a minimum payment. So I'm going to show you how to do a minimum payment. If you pay it off every month, you do the same thing just for the full amount. So you're going to come over and you're going to write a check in your expense, however you want to do it. You're going to come in here and you're going to enter in the vendor name, which would be your credit card company. I'm just calling it corporate credit card for this example. Click add, save. You're going to choose your bank account. You're going to choose the date on which you are paying the payment for the card. Let's say that we're paying this like on May 6th. Okay. Now, what are you going to select here is the big question. Sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to put it back to all the expense accounts. No, you're going to want to choose your credit card that you're paying down because as you enter in the charges, you've already entered in the expense. So here we're paying down the card. And what some people think is I'm just going to pay down the full corporate credit card. Let me show you what happens if you make a $500 payment and you say you pay down the whole corporate card. Click save and close. Let's go look at what happens inside the chartered accounts. Okay. So you'll notice that this shows that now only $573.97 is owed. But look at this, the Candace sub account shows the full amount and the James account shows the full amount. It doesn't show a breakdown of which card you're paying. And this is often what I see people saying. They're like, why does it still show my sub accounts? Because once you create sub accounts, you have to break down anything, um, any payments back to those sub accounts. So we'll go in here to the register. We'll open this one up. And we're going to break down what did we actually pay. So we're going to say we paid in this example, $445 to the Candace card. And we'll say that we paid James's card off. Oops. One moment. I start typing something for 55, right? Cause that's what he owed. So our whole payment is $500, but it's broke out between two cards. Now, some people are gonna be like, what a nuisance to decide how much I'm paying on each card. Well, if you don't want to do that, then you would separate each card, but you're still gonna have to pay it down, right? So you either have one corporate card and that's it with no detail of each card. So it's just one credit card account within QuickBooks, right? So you only have one account and everything just goes in there. But if you wanna do sub accounts, even if you did them as main categories and not sub accounts, you're still gonna have to break down the payment for it to apply. So this is the best of both worlds, honestly. The simplest is to have one card, everything downloads into there. But if you do need to have separate cards, cause that's how your credit card downloads through the feed, that's fine. Or you need that level of detail. That's fine. Just make sure you're breaking down your payment to each sub account. Okay. Now you're going to say, all right, now it's time to reconcile. Where do I reconcile at the corporate level or the sub account level for the online version? It actually lets you do it at the corporate or the main level and it gives you the detail in the sub. On the desktop version, you still have to even reconcile at the sub level to make sure everything balances accurately. So, but for online, you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna reconcile in any way you want, whether you go here and click reconcile or from the account, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna choose your corporate credit card. If you wanna do each card you can, or you can do at the corporate level. And then you come here and you're gonna enter in whatever it says on your statement. So I can't remember as I was teaching, I know it was more than a thousand fifty five. It was like, I just don't remember the exact amount off the top of my head. 
I should have wrote it down. Okay, we'll, we'll have to adjust in a moment. You'll have your statement, so you're going to balance yours off of your statement. So I'm going to say the last day of the statement was the 30th. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to enter in the $55, 1000 Oh, yes, it was $18.97. So I'm going to go up here to make it match my statement. Now, yours will show on your statement, so make sure that, let me check mark that first. Make sure that you select exactly what it says to make sure you match. Mine's an example, so I'm going to make a little adjustment because I forgot to write down the amount. All right, so we've now checkmarked all of our charges. Our payments didn't technically come in until after the statement date, so we'll take care of those on the next statement, right? Yet we checkmarked everything that applied. We want to make sure it's always zero. We click finish. We're not going to enter any of these. We're just going to click done. Now, when we go over and we look at the detail of what happened in our chart of accounts, you'll see when you click on the register, all the transactions that we've reg reconciled have an R next to them. We look at the sub accounts, they also have an R next to them. So we know that that means that every transaction that we entered is reconciled, which is perfect. You can technically click reconcile and do each individual card if you want, or you can do it at the corporate level. That's up to you, but you want to make sure you apply the payments at the sub level, right? For each individual card. So I hope this helped you in setting up your corporate card. Remember inside your chart of accounts, you want to start with your main level and just decide how does it download directly to your bank? Is it one card and everything comes through? Is it each individual card and you need each of these to download separately? Whatever that is, you're going to want, you're going to move forward with setting that up inside your chart of accounts, whether it's a main category or subcategories and make sure that you apply your payments and review to make sure they're balancing out, especially if you use sub accounts and don't forget to always reconcile. I hope you enjoyed this tip. If you'd like to receive them in the future, go up above or down below and make sure to get on our tips and tricks. We'll send them straight to your inbox. And if you're needing support and learning how to customize and use QuickBooks specifically for your business, check out confidencewithquickbooks.com. It is our training program that takes you from A to Z. Can't wait to see you in our next tip. Have an amazing day. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.